Today on Blitzkrieg Model Works, I'm going to show you how to take a cheap wooden artist panel from the dollar store and turn it into an attractive display base for your models or dioramas. Join me, shall you? So on my last video, I showed a, uh, a, a base that I was doing for a Panther II that had a, uh, a print of a concrete floor on it. And for that, I used a display base like this that I picked up at the dollar store, dropping three bucks. And it's just a, a wooden panel. Um, and I finished it with stain and uh, a, a gloss coat sealer and then I had applied glue and then the, um, the printed um, concrete floor on top of that. So I've had a few guys asking like, well, how the heck did you do that? Well, you don't need stuff like this from the dollar store. You can use MDF, uh, which is medium density fiberboard. You can use plywood. Uh, the problem with plywood is you have the edges to contend with. You can get veneer strips that you can actually iron on. They actually have a, a heat sensitive glue you can put on with the household iron. Or I just found the, these ones at my local dollar store for three bucks. So what I'm gonna show you here uh, is how to turn this into this um, and what you're gonna need to do that. First off, some of you probably noticed that I'm not in my usual basement uh, workshop hovel, uh, my little dungeon as it were. I'm actually at the workshop of my store. I own and operate an airsoft store here in Canada. And we do, or I do, uh, wood refinishing on some of the wood stocks that come in. It's, it's kind of rare, but I keep all the stuff here rather than at home. So I'm going to change the camera around so you can see uh, what we're going to use here to change this over. So just give me a second. Okay, so for this project, I got a few things here. Um, you're going to need your wood plaque. You're gonna need uh, foam brushes. You can use paint brushes as well. I prefer foam brushes and they're, you can get those at the dollar store too, pretty cheap. You will need your stain of choice. I'm using a Minmax oil-based stain. This particular shade is Gunstock. You will need some sort of a top coat. Uh, you can use either a water-based urethane or an oil base. Uh, the stain itself is oil base. You will need paint thinner to clean up. For prep work for the wood, you will need some sandpaper. You can use wet and dry, but you don't want to use it wet at all. Uh, this is 220 grit. You can always read the back for 220 is standard, uh, and maybe a, a 320 grit finish, and you can pick that up at, at Lowe's or a Home Depot, Walmart, wherever. Something that I find invaluable, especially before I do the stain, is to have a little product. This is called a tack rag, and it's a sticky gauze which pulls all the dust and, and sanding debris off of your wood before you stain. You want to get that off, especially before you use any of the varathanes because it will come through as chunks of crap in your finish. Additionally, you will want some gloves to deal with. I have a couple of plastic uh, cups that I actually use to stand the product on while it's drying. Uh, I know you've not proper use of a screwdriver, but to open your lids and also to put them back down. Uh, and like I said, some paint thinner and some rags for cleanup. Uh, so I'm going to strip this off and we'll take a look and uh, see what we have for an actual finish. It's not always quite the same through the clear plastic, um, but we'll take a look in a sec. Okay, so I got the plastic off and I'm not really sure what kind of wood this is. It's probably something like beech. It's definitely not a maple or a hardwood, although once you get the, uh, the finish on it, it does look pretty nice. So the first thing we want to do is prep this. And I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to get oils from my hands on here. And what you want to do is you want to take your sandpaper. And I like to fold it. Uh, it's called thrice, not once, twice, thrice. And when you sand, you always go with the grain. So the, the grain is the long way of the wood. And you'll see that's the way that the panel goes. 
and I'm seeing some machining marks, some sanding from the factory. And you just want to do this over the whole thing, including the sides, but you want to keep your hand flat, otherwise you can get undulations in it. Um, as well on the sides, you want to watch that you don't get any, uh, like the corners. This one, I don't know if you can actually see that. It's kind of round, like right from the factory. That's how it came. So I'll try and square that up. Not that it's a big deal. And I noticed that under the, uh, let's see if I can get that. There we go. That was under the plastic. I don't know what that is, but we'll sand all that off. So I'm going to cut the camera off. I'm going to prep all of this and then we'll start doing the, the stain. And we're back. So this is all sanded. And one thing that, uh, a couple of things I should mention. One, don't sand where you're going to do your finishing. Um, the stain is not that big of a deal, but the top coat will show every little fleck of dust. So make sure you're, you're going to do this away from where you're doing this. And if you have a spray booth, even better to do it there to keep the dust down. Uh, not necessarily spraying, we'll do this by hand. Um, when you're done sanding, it's very important to get all the dust off. Use a tack rag, do not use a damp towel. Because what will happen is if you get this wet, it raises the grain of the wood and it just wrecks everything you already did. The wood will dry and it'll be all lumpy bumpy again. So you want to use your tack rag. I don't know if you can see how much dust is coming off of that. And that's after I wiped it with, a, with just a dry towel, dry paper towel. Now, when I was looking at these uh, at the dollar store, I did notice that the sides of some of them were quite a bit different. Some would have like the lighter wood all the way around. This one's got slightly darker pinker wood around it. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, if it's the same type of wood, like I said, I don't know what kind of wood this is. It's probably something like a beech or another type of softwood. Um, but once that's done, you get your stain. Now this is a liquid oil based stain. There are also paste stains. And they tell you to stir these, but you can shake these up. And it comes out looking kind of like very runny paint. Now what I'm going to do, and we'll get oops, a little plant stage and this is just so I don't get um, this stuck down here once I'm done. Once, uh, once we do the stain it'll have to sit, um, I'm going to let it sit overnight, it's the evening right now so I'll wait till tomorrow to continue and we, you can actually put more on if you want, if you don't like the color, but once you've got some on it's very difficult to take off. And we just take our foam brush and put this more into it. And believe it or not, that other base that I showed you looked just like this when I started. And you don't have to use stain, you can use paint just as well. You can see the stains kind of wicking in. Just to show you what the difference is right off the bat. And now you see the green. It brings out the green beautifully. Now you don't, I don't really don't worry about most of the surface because I usually take my dioramas like right to the edge or maybe cut them back and half to three quarters of an inch. Now you don't want to have the stain sit and dry. You want to put it on, let it soak in, and then wipe it off. You can always put more on, but it's very difficult to take it off once it's on there. You almost have to bleach the wood out. You want to do the sides. in a little bit and we'll just let it sit for a few minutes. And, and I didn't quite sand that side with the uh, 
the sticky stuff. I'll show you here real quick like. So something's on there, I'm not sure what. I'm gonna have to sand down. I might have to uh, take some acetone or something to that. Um, but I'm gonna cut back now and uh, I'm gonna let this soak. I'm gonna take care of that. And then we'll, we'll let this set up overnight and then we'll do the top coat uh, tomorrow, which will be in a few seconds for you guys. So I just put everything off to the side for a second just to show you a little something. Uh, a little trick that I learned uh, many, many years ago, when you have gloves on and you need to take them off and they're all full of goo and you don't want to get the stuff off your hands, really easy trick. Grab it by the, the palm area, peel that side off, ball that up in your hand, go underneath, voila. So we're back, we've got the stain all nice and dried and I noticed something, if you can take a look at that, these light spots here as well as here, um, that I'm pretty sure is adhesive from the assembly process. Normally I wouldn't do the bottom, but I wanted to check and see if that was the actual issue. And yeah, it's glue. Uh, I did try to sand it out. It almost worked, but I, even then I had to basically paint a coat of the stain over top, kind of like paint and I didn't wipe it off. I let it sit and it's still there. For the purposes of, of the demo, I'll just let it go. Um, but normally, you know, seeing that something like this would happen, I would either try to sand that out, because I don't know what kind of adhesive they use to put this on. I would either do that veneer over top or just paint it. Just paint it black or gray or, or some other type of an effect. Um, but we'll just do the, uh, the clear coat over this. But before I wanted to do that, I talked a little bit about if you want to use plywood as a base and then use veneer and not staining the plywood itself. You'd stain the plywood itself if it was a veneer. You can get stuff with it like an oak or a maple or a beech veneer. There's several types of, of veneer um, plywood you can get. What you don't want is something like this, which is a fir or a spruce plywood. And this is like quarter inch and some three quarter inch. Because what happens if you stain this, the grain is really wild and you get this, or this, which can look okay, but realistically, personally for me, I don't like the looks of this. I would much rather have a nice hardwood display, because to me it's like, oh, it's just cheap plywood. Uh, you could paint over that, that's fine, but personally I don't like staining stuff like this. That's just uh, for the presentation effect. Now, getting to your clear coats, there's lots of different treatments you can use, but most of us are gonna do one of two things. You're either gonna use a water-based varathane or polyurethane solution or an oil-based unit. In this case, I'm gonna do the oil base. And one thing you do not, do not, do not want to do is shake these. Because what happens if you shake them is they get all full of bubbles and you do not want them full of bubbles because the bubbles will translate right onto here. And again, you can put this on with a foam brush or a brush no problem. Now, talking with a few people that I've had in the store, kind of looking in the shop here, seeing what I'm doing, the consensus seems to be that this is uh, a wood probably called basswood, which is usually used in our like RC boat or boat modeling. It's a fairly lightweight, inexpensive wood, but one of the problems is it, it, it fuzzes up when you sand it, and even with all the sanding that's on here, even through the gloves I can kind of feel it, and I had the same problem with the uh, the other one that I was showing you, but just for giggles, we will do this the same way. And it's going down fairly nice. Now when you put this on, you don't wanna go from one edge to the other, because what'll happen is you get this big gob of uh, clear coat that dribbles over the edge that you have to deal with. So you wanna start in the middle and go to the outside Don't put it on too thick. You want a nice thin coat, just like when you're painting your kits. You can always put more on, but it's a real pain in the ass to take it off. Just go right to the edge, spin it. And you don't want to work it too much. You just want to get it on there. 
The first coat's usually one of the toughest, especially uh, in the shop right now, it's very dry. And I can see it, I don't know if you can see it there, but the wood is so dry, it's just sucking the, the, the finish right in, which isn't a bad thing, but I can see, um, I'll see if I can get it to your angle. That's how you finish this up and try to smooth this out a bit. Fuzzy in there. Now, because it's an oil base, it will late. It'll take a little longer to to uh, cure up and dry out. Let's see if I can get this angle just right. And you can see all the little air bubbles and fuzzies that are in there. Most of that is fuzzies from the wood. Um, I'm going to try and get another one of these and prep it and and st and stain it, but do it with a, um, a sanding sealer. And hopefully, I can get that done before uh, this one's all all done. When you do the sides, you can do the same thing. Do to one side, and then the other. You don't want to go complete from one side to the other. Because it's the sides and it's going to be vertical, you'll probably get some of it will pull down. Will pull down on the sides. So you get uh, kind of a thick looking run across the bottom. So don't be afraid to come back in 10 or 15 minutes. Don't clean up the brush really fast, but come back in about 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, just run the edge along the bottom. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to get the light ah, in here. I don't know if you can see it. Lights aren't really good for doing the reflecting, but there's a little bit like if you if you really look close, like at the angle I'm looking at, um, I can see it's kind of a, a thick little uh, go, uh, bead of this. The finish has come down. So what you do, well, you leave it for about five, 10 minutes. While that, you, got, you take your foam brush, and you take off all the excess. And I said, this stuff is oil-based, so we'll be using paint thinner for cleanup. Um, this stuff you can just use, soapy water works awesome. And just once it's pulled down, you just kind of run it along the bottom doing this well enough to show you guys. Just run it across the bottom. Across the bottom. And, and that sucks up pretty much all the access. Um, let it sit for another 10, five, 10 minutes. Come back, see how it looks. If, it, if you don't see any, you know, that little bit of a bump at the bottom, you're good to go. If you do, you know, see some more, don't be afraid to just take your brush and take the excess off. And that's all there is to it. Um, that's you just do successive coats. If you don't have the furring, the fuzzy problem that this wood has, if you're just using regular um, uh, vernier or a verniered plywood, you shouldn't have this problem with the good stuff. And I usually will do three or four coats. So you follow the directions on here, put it on, let it sit for a few hours or overnight, whatever the directions tell you. Light, go over it lightly with your 220 or 320 grit sandpaper. Use a tack rag to take the dust off or a damp cloth. Um, put another coat on and you keep doing that. And then your final top coat, you just do the top coat and you leave it after that. Okay, um, that's it for this. Uh, I'm going to try and get the, another one done just to show you the difference. I will finish this one up. I will probably end up sanding the whole thing down and painting it, but um, we'll see what happens, how it ends up turning out. Right? Talk to you so in a few So we're guys. back. And as you can see, I've actually got two different boards here. This is the board that I just showed you. And if you can see, the finish... Um, it's very rough still. Uh, the basswood just kind of fluffed up, which is, I've heard is a real problem with this stuff. I've tried to find some stuff called sanding sealer. I haven't been able to find anything locally. I tried some of this wood prep product on this one. It didn't really do anything. It actually, I think, made absorption a little worse. But what I did with this one, is, as you can see, this has some on it. And it looks 
rough, but actually it's very smooth. The little, de what you're seeing in the shadows is actually the wood green itself. And what I did is after I put a couple of coats of stain on, I went over it with some 4 aught or 4 zero steel wool. So, and, and it took all that off. The sides were actually almost glass smooth when I was done. I was really impressed with how well this worked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly give this a very light sanding and uh, we'll put another coat on and we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, we're back and everything's done. This is the second base that we did. And if you look really close, you can see there's some dimpling still. That's from when we took the steel wool over when we the, um, the stain had dried and we took the softer wood off that would swell up once we put the top coat on. So this is with two coats. So I would probably send, give this a light sand and put another one or two coats on if I wanted to seal that up and make it nice and smooth. Sides turned out quite good, despite being a little on the light side. And the first one we did, I cleaned up and it turned out gorgeous, really nice. Same with the edges. Although there's some spotting, which I'm sure is from the gluing process. But other than that, it turned out really nice. And I also brought in the base that I had done for the Panther 2. Um, I'm having to replace this. The original one got damaged, so I had to print off another sheet. And this is just matte photo paper, so I don't actually have to put dull coat on, but I will to seal it to keep it from being damaged. But this is the one that was done in the golden oak color. So you can see the difference between the gun stock or kind of a cherry look versus an oak look. And this one, it is a bit on the rough side, but because I was putting something on top, I didn't really care about the, uh, the top part, but the sides are still pretty good. And then this one, not finished at all on the bottom because you're not going to see it, but I'm going to put little felt pads so they can sit nicely in the display case and not scratch anything up if I pull them in and out to take them to shows and whatnot. Uh, to put this on, I'm going to use a spray adhesive made by 3M called Super 77. You could use white glue, uh, yellow carpenter's glue, um, whatever you'd like to do that uh, will work fine. Like I said, I'm going to use a spray adhesive on this and then glue it down. And then overcoat it so it doesn't get damaged again. So that's it. That's how easy it is to do with these. Uh, as I said before, you could just as easily paint them whatever color you want as well. Um, you don't have to do the top if you don't want to, if you're doing something like, like this one where we're putting this on top. I didn't have to do that at all, but I wanted to anyway. If you wanted to have a nice little band of, of wood around, you can just put some masking tape around the side before you put your groundwork on. Make sure to rough up the area your groundwork's on. You don't want it smooth. You want it to be able to stick to this. Uh, to the point where you might actually have to put in some small screws or something if it's fairly thick. But uh, otherwise, it's, it's very simple. It takes a, a few, uh, few woodworking uh, stains and varnishes and some foam brushes and paint brushes. But otherwise, it's very, very simple to do. It just takes a while. You could spray the varnish on if you want. Uh, I prefer just to use the sponge. The sponge brushes but yeah if you wanted to use your airbrush no problem i wouldn't use an airbrush for the stain that just gets wiped on and wiped off with a rag but that's it so hopefully that helps with some of the questions i had earlier and thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it talk to you later